Survivor Series main event. Alliance versus WWF. Loser goes out of business forever. Or until 2006 when they revive ECW. The Rock and Chris Jericho and Big Show and Undertaker and Kane versus Stone Cold Steve Austin and Kurt Angle and Booker T and Rob Van Dam and Shane McMahon. The bell rings and I note there are 45 minutes to go. Yep. And they went 44 minutes. 44.57, it says here. <laughs> Which is amazing because I was watching the match and it is a very, very good match. And there was a lot of great wrestling in the match. And, I mean, it did go way too long. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, there were periods where I looked at the clock and I was like, there's 30 fucking minutes left? <laughs> like, maybe it ends and i like i watched the show so i knew this didn't happen but my brain was telling me maybe it ends after i don't know 20 minutes and then we got a long history of wcw video package mm, like yeah. how could this possibly go 30 more minutes and it did it did and what's funny about it listen this match is awesome it's a tremendous main event i really liked it on the whole but on the whole it went too long and the funny thing is the long parts went too long, but also the short parts went too short. Because there's a part in the middle here where Brian is your favorite. It's the Survivor Series, and guys are getting pinned in two minutes with the moves they never get pinned with. Schoolboys and the jumping kick that RVD uses. and just Oh, my God. He did his writer kick. Oh. And we were just talking about how he never got hurt doing yes. that move. Yes. Yep. And he didn't get hurt here, but he did it. And you could see on the landing that he, like, jammed his knee yeah. on, the, on, the, on the leg. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was brutal. But he survived, and he kept going. So the match begins. We go, I think, a thir I had almost 13 minutes before this for the first pinfall. They just had a fun tag match. Guys would t get a hot tag. The baby faces would run wild. They'd cut off and just repeat, repeat, repeat. The key is Shane McMahon never tagged in, but he broke up at least a half dozen pins. He's interfering constantly. Don't you only get one save? No, apparently not in this match. Apparently there's okay. unlimited saves if you are Shane McMahon. Hmm. So, 13 minutes in, Big Show gets a hot tag. He's running wild. The place is going nuts. But when he got, does his big oh, for the choke slam, Angle pounces. He kicks him in the side, hits an angle slam. Booker T tags in. It's a scissors kick. They tag in RVD. He does the five-star frog splash. And then they finally tag in Shane. The first time he's been legal. And this little prick does a top rope elbow and pins the giant. 13 minutes in. And then, of course, now he's legal in the ring. So the Rock gets in there and kills him. Kane has a choke slam. Taker does a tombstone. Jericho has the lion salt. He's pinned in two minutes. Great. At this point, I'm just in love with the match. So here's the part where there's several pins in a very short time. Rob pins Kane with, as I wrote here, the leg breaker kick. Because <laughs> this one did look even worse than all the, all the rest of them. It only went like four minutes. Kane got pinned in four minutes. And all I could think was, this is the second match in a row Rob has won with this kick. Were they trying to make this his finish? Because it wasn't, didn't last long. Two minutes later, Booker T distracts, oh, Undertaker has the last ride. Booker T distracts him from making the pin. Austin sees Stunner. Angle pins the Undertaker. A two minute fall. Two minutes later, Rock pushes Booker T into Angle, schoolboys him, Booker T is out. It is uh, three on two. Two minutes later, Jericho is shouting spots to Rob Van Dam at the top of his lungs. Hits the breakdown and pins him. They're like Rob has been so hot, and he gets pinned in a two-minute fall here. And they cut to the WCW locker room, and their reaction matched my own. Mouth agape, unable to move. They couldn't believe they just beat Rob like this. Jericho's my favorite was when they, uh, they pinned Booker T, and his shoulder was clearly up. And they cut backstage to the WCW crew and they're all screaming his fucking shoulder was up <laughs> and it was jericho was pissed at rob van dam for something and he let van dam and everybody with an earshot know it he was loud in this match did they get in a shoot fight i didn't see the entirety of Charlotte but i saw enough God. i actually should go back and watch the entire thing but no uh, are you sure it wasn't a virtually? Shoot? I would bet you anything, Craig. Get out of here! I would bet you everything, uh, anything that what you saw was the vast majority of it. The rest was just like Nia doing the shittiest back suplex you ever saw in your life. I saw that part. Oh my god! Dropping it on her fucking head. I wonder why Charlotte was mad. Yeah. Fire her. Yeah, she really should be. Come on now. 
So it's now two on two. The match slows down for a bit here. And I know this is 20 years ago, not news, but it's the last hope for World Championship Wrestling. And their fighters are Stone Cold Steve Austin and Kurt Angle. So the heat on Jericho, I counted seven minutes before Rocket is hot tag. And Rocket's in there and does like two moves and puts a sharpshooter in Kurt Angle, who immediately submits. Heyman is beside himself, can't believe what he's seen. Now, in the long term, this actually makes total sense. Although, if you're Kurt Angle, and you are, in fact, a double agent, the smartest thing to do at this point was triple team Austin, beat him, and then submit. But anyway, so Angle submits. Now Austin is down by himself against two men. And two minutes later, he pins Jericho with the cradle. Jericho is pissed, pissed at the world, pissed at himself, thinks it's unfair. So he grabs his teammate, The Rock, and he hits the breakdown and lays him out. The only thing I didn't like about it is ultimately uh, Jericho should have tried to destroy World Championship Wrestling in his final act. These, yeah, they have both hours. Still these fuckers. Yeah. I must end WCW as my final act of revenge. Yes, exactly. It's like a. Yes, <laughs> that would have been a better story. So Rock kicks out of that. So Jericho goes, starts to go back to the ring until Undertaker appears to chase him away. So it's Rock and Austin for several minutes. They're both doing sharpshooters. The belt gets in the ring, but nobody uses it. Rock gets a stunner. Nick Patrick is there to yank Earl Hebner out of the ring. So Austin does a rock bottom on the rock. The rock kicks out. Heel ref Nick Patrick stops counting. Heel wrestler Steve Austin lays out heel ref Nick Patrick for being a terrible heel referee. He pulls Hebner into the ring. Hebner gets bumped again. He has the stunner, Austin does, but there is no referee. Angle comes running in out of nowhere, picks up the belt, hits Stone Cold Steve Austin with it. The place goes beyond apeshit. And Rock follows with a rock bottom, gets the pin. He is the sole survivor. The WWF wins. The Alliance is dead. Yeah, the business was shitty for this, and they killed the invasion, and it was a disaster. But at the end of the day, this was a very fitting final match, at least in the ring. It was a good match, good wrestlers, told a good story. Of course, ultimately, it was not WWF wrestlers versus WCW wrestlers. No. Like a mix of, of everybody, but, you know, it was a, it was a nice finale. Yes. And then Vince comes out and celebrates, and I was like, God. Vince, comes, I was actually more annoyed. They lost. I was actually more annoyed that he, the after Austin is pinned, the only reaction we cut backstage for is Stephanie. Yeah. Because in the end, this is all about Stephanie versus Vince. Sure. That's all that really mattered. Now. You know, if it had only been a few years later, actually not even a few years, I think a few months later, you know, WCW could have won, and as part of the storyline, WWF would have to change their name to the World Wrestling Entertainment. They hmm. could, yeah, because they lost that it name was the next I year, think, was uh, it? Yeah, the following year. I, I, yeah, my my memory was it happened during the invasion. Obviously, that's not true, but it's not it's not far away. The name change. Your uh, biggest fan says Vinny's intangibles. <laughs> this should be good. Vinny's intangibles is that his is intelligent, inspirational, and great will. Brian's intangibles are Lord. he is a whining, comma anger, comma. And his genetically Jack Hammer. Not everyone's a gifted essayist, gifted linguist. We all have our strengths. We're not all wordsmiths out there. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm. The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.